Greetings! Welcome to Saint of the Week, the show where we choose one saint's feast day from this week and discuss their life and their impact on the church. The saint for this week is Saint Maximilian Kolbe, whose feast day is August 14th, this Tuesday. Maximilian was born Raymond Kolbe on January 8th, 1894, in Dunska Poland. He was the second of three boys born to his parents, who were Franciscan tertiaries and weavers. Soon after his birth, his family moved to the town of Pabianica. Raymond was known to be a mischievous and rowdy child, but when he was 12 years old, he received a vision which changed his life. The Virgin Mary appeared to him holding two crowns, one red and one white, one for martyrdom and one for purity. She asked him if he would take one, and he replied that he would accept both. In 1907, Raymond and his older brother Francis joined the Conventual Franciscans, enrolling in the Junior Seminary at Ilbov. He excelled in mathematics and physics, and on September 4, 1910, when he was 16 years old, he became a novice, taking the religious name Maximilian. Maximilian was sent to Rome in 1912 to attend the Pontifical Gregorian University. He professed his final vows in 1914 and earned a doctorate in philosophy the next year. During his time as a student, he and six of his friends founded the Militia Immaculatae, or the Army of the Immaculate One, which was dedicated to the conversions of sinners, op oppositions to anti-Catholic Freemasonry, and devotion to Jesus and Mary. Maximilian was ordained a priest in 1918 and earned a doctorate in theology in 1919. In that same year, he returned to Poland to teach history at the Krakow Seminary, and he also remained very active in his promotion of devotion to Mary. Around this time, he began to suffer from tuberculosis, which forced him to take a long leave of absence from his teaching job. In January of 1922, Maximilian founded the monthly magazine Night of the Immaculate, which encouraged people to be active and alive in practice of their faith. By 1927, they had a press run of 70,000 issues. Eventually, his activities became too large for where he was, and so he founded a new conventional Franciscan monastery at Nyapokalanov, near Warsaw, which later became a major religious pu publishing center. Wanting to spread the good news further, in 1930, Maximilian set out with six other brothers for East Asia. He founded a monastery on the outskirts of Nagasaki, Japan in 1931, and began publishing a Japanese version of his magazine. The monastery survived the atomic bombing and is still active to this day. Maximilian founded another monastery in Malabar, India in 1932, but his poor health forced him to return to Poland four years later. In 1938, he started his own radio station at Neopogolanov, but his work was cut short in 1939 when the Nazis invaded Poland. He and several other brothers were arrested in September, but they were released on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. After being released, Maximilian continued work at his monastery, which included providing shelter for over 2,000 Jews hiding from German persecution. It also remained a publishing house and issued several anti-Nazi publications, so it is little surprise that it was shut down by German authorities on February 17, 1941. On that same day, Maximilian and four others were arrested by the Gestapo and imprisoned at Paviok. He was transferred to Auschwitz on the 28th of May and continued to act as a priest, which resulted in violent beatings and lashings. At the end of July, ten prisoners disappeared from the camp, and so ten men were picked at random to be starved to death to deter any other escape attempts. When the men were picked, one of them cried out in anguish for his wife and children, and so Maximilian volunteered himself to take the man's place. Every day, as the men lay starving in an underground bunker, Maximilian led them in prayer to Our Lady. After two weeks, he was the only one left alive. Wanting the bunker empty, the guards gave him a lethal injection of carbolic acid and then burned his body with the others. He died on August 14, 1941, at the age of 47. He is the patron saint of families, prisoners, journalists, the pro-life movement, amateur radio, Esperantists, and the Militia Immaculati. The action Maximilian is most known for is when he offered up his life to save another man's. But this was not a last-minute act of heroism. 
His entire life, a life of charity and dedication, had been leading up to that moment. He remained calm and courageous, even to the point of death. A courage born out of his limitless passion for and devotion to our Lord and his mother. St. Maximilian Kolbe, pray for us. Our honorable mentions for this week are Blessed Karl Leisner, St. Tikhon of Zadonsk, Blessed Claudio Granzato, St. Hyacinth, St. Jane de la Noue, and St. Firminus of Metz. And of course, there are thousands of other saints who undoubtedly have their feast days this week, but there are so many of them, there is no way we could list them all here. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of St. Louis. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Peace, Peace be to you. you.